Let me say at the outset here, I love David Lipscomb. He's been good to me. I don't hold a grudge. I just want to do the right thing. And uh, I would like to go over maybe just a few minutes some nostalgia, I guess you'd say. And uh, then I give it a little brief history. But uh, you can't get the wrestlers out of your mind. Uh, the first wrestler that of course comes to my mind was Tim Terry. Uh, I guess I got to mix a little history in with it. But when I started the program, it was a dream, so to speak. I was at a basketball game in Jolton. Uh, Coach Head was coaching then. And I sat on the stage to watch the game. And so I pulled the curtain back and I looked in the back and there was a red mat. And uh, the coach's name was Alsop, very big fellow, about 6'4", weighed about 240. And I said, the coach, what in the world is that, uh, what is that back there? Is that a, you all have gymnastics here? I did, I did do some gymnastics. I did quite a bit of that and was pretty good at it in high school. I understand Rob's father was very good. But anyway, he said, well, that's a wrestling mat. I said, a wrestling mat? What are you talking about? He said, yeah, we have wrestling here. I said, high school wrestling? You have high school wrestling? I said, yeah. Well, I thought, that's neat. And so I didn't think anything about it until some months later, and I went to another ball game with Coach Head at Cone High School. And uh, while the ball game was going on, there was a wrestling match. And I thought, what's going on in that other part of the gym? So I went over and there was a wrestling match between Cone and somebody, some other school, I don't remember who it was now. And I was really enthralled with it. I hardly even got back to the ball game. And, uh, I learned a lot, a lot that night. Uh, over there we had, uh, uh, I'll get to a little more of that in a minute. Uh, but anyway, I, I would like to mention some things. Uh, I, I got the idea, uh, I'd like to start that program at Lifton. So I raised $700 and I got some scatter mats. Well, the first thing I found out, you don't wrestle on scatter mats, believe me. <laughs> you don't do that. Uh, we, I got permission to go down into the basement of Burton Gym and there were posts all over the place. We wrestled in between the posts and hit them at times. And I had about seven boys that came out. I can name them pretty well. Uh, Eddie Bates, uh, Alan Bates, a boy named John Vlahakis, a uh, boy that's a dentist now, Keith Thetford. And uh, we didn't know anything. We were right. <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. So I raised a little money, got them some uh, yellow uniforms, gold uniforms we call them, and we started out. Well, we didn't do too well the first year. But I was blessed with one of the best wrestlers in the whole state of Tennessee. That was Bill Terry, uh, Tim Terry. Tim was a natural. He's just a natural wrestler. He just, uh, I don't know, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't hardly know what end was up, you know, but I, I'm a quick learner, I learned. And I got a, several of the coaches I talked to, and one of the coaches that helped me tremendously was the blind coach. He wasn't blind himself, but he, <laughs> sorry about that, no pun meant in it. But uh, Tennessee School for the Blind. And so I thought, that would be a good place to start. Those guys can't see, so I couldn't do too much. So uh, I got a card well, he said, he said, come on over, he said, and uh, we'll, we'll show you some. He was really, really helpful. And so uh, we went over and boy, did we get our butts kicked. I'm telling you, uh, you know, you have to hold their hand and then they start. And boy, you better be ready to wrestle because you're going to be on your back, let me tell you. So, uh, but I can prove that by Eddie Bates. Eddie, I don't know if Eddie's here or not, but Eddie Bates learned real quick. Eddie wrestled a boy named uh, White, Bruce White. And I never will forget, my mother was there, came down from Delaware to visit me, so I took mom to the wrestling match. <laughs> it was so funny. But uh, Alan, this boy, White, put Alan in a guillotine. And he stretched him out like a piece of laundry. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness. And Eddie was in pain. And this boy, to, to make matters worse, patted him on the stomach. Like that. And when he got out of it, we had an assistant coach for a while, I forget what his name was. And he, when he came off the mat, he told Eddie, he said, Eddie, that was a guillotine. And Eddie screamed, don't tell me what it was, I was in it. 
<laughs> and uh, that was one thing, but uh, Tim blew the top off. And uh, Lowry is here, he'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, we went over the second year to a tournament at Overton. And Tim Terry beat the best wrestlers they had. One year's experience. He beat the boy from DuPont. Uh, his name was Cousy, I'll never forget it. He beat the boy from Antioch. He beat the boy from Overton. And one of the coaches was suspicious. He said, tell me, Coach Goff, where did that boy Terry come from? I said, well, he's just a plain old Lipscomb boy is all I can tell you. And he said, mm. he said I thought maybe he transferred from someplace. But Terry went to the state the second year. He went to the state and wrestled a top guy named Waller from Memphis and did a good job with him. And he came in third, and uh, that was pretty good. So we were pretty much on our way. And, you know, I, I just love to talk. I hope I don't talk too long. Somebody throw a shoe at me if they something <laughs> other. And uh, you know the story about the preacher that preached too long and somebody threw a shoe at him and hit a woman on the front row. And when they revived her, she said, hit me again, I can still hear him. <laughs> but uh, let me give you a little brief thing that's in the, my mind all the time. Man, I, I'm, I'm never bored. I go to, yeah, I think about my wrestlers, it's what they did and how much I appreciate them. I didn't know anything. I was bluffing it day by day until I learned something, you know. And uh, they, they did the job. They're the ones that deserve the credit. But uh, Tim, Tim was great. Uh, I, could, I could pretty well handle all of them, but I couldn't handle him too much. I just, I just couldn't do it. And uh, he, he's just too good, that's all. And I, I didn't really like to wrestle with him much. But, <laughs> but uh, let me start with uh, John Vlahakis. I hope I don't take too long. Uh, John Vlahakis was a big boy, weighed about 185 pounds. He wasn't a very good wrestler at all. And uh, we wrestled Cone in the old Burton gym. And he's the wrestler boy, weighed about 185 pounds. He was built like Schwarzenegger. Uh, he was, boy, he was big. And his, from his chin down to his shoulders were just an angle. And I thought, oh my God, I said, John's going to get killed. I said, I don't know if they put him out there or not. And this is the truth. We put him out on the mat, and I turned around to go to my seat to sit down, and I heard the whistle, I heard the mat. I turned around, and the referee was raising John's hand. And I thought, what? And he pinned that boy. And I never knew, that, that kid was so hot, you could see his face was boiling. And th those are things you don't forget, folks. You just, you just don't forget those type of things like that. And then as the time went on, things got better, you know, and uh, I got uh, better wrestlers. One boy that was a great little wrestler was Bobby Newsom, 112 pounder, I think, at that time. He was in the wrestling match with Ryan, which uh, we learned to hate Ryan wrestlers, you know, just, you know, quote. But uh, they always won, 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 won all the time, you know. But uh, they didn't win all the time with us. We beat them several times. But uh, Bobby Newsom was wrestling in the, uh, it was the, not the district, but the regional. And he put this boy in what you call a standing, uh, uh, what do you call a boy, you know? Uh, uh, well, anyway, he put him in it, and the boy uh, he, uh, tried to get out of it, and he, he drove him into the mat and knocked him out. Uh, 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 Granby, standing Granby. And he put him in the mat when he tried to get out and put him in the mat, drove him in the mat, and the boy was knocked out. Well, he hadn't recovered, so the referee didn't know what to do. He just raised Bobby's hand. Now, this shows how dumb I was. Uh, the boy ran off, got, uh, came to, ran off the mat, went into the parking lot. Well, that disqualified him right there. He was disqualified. Uh, the score was uh, Bobby had won it. He was ahead like seven to six. And so they go out and get the boy outside, bring him back in. And uh, the ref wants to start the match over. Well, I, I should have never done that. I should have never started the match over. I mean, he was disqualified to start with. I don't know if any of you all remember this or not. 
But Bobby lost the match by one point, and he was devastated. So was I. But that was dumbness on my part. I should. Have, I just said, no, he's not going back out there. He, he's the boy's disqualified. The injury disqualified if he went off the match. But well, those are just dumb little things, you know. And I could go on and on, and I was good about a long time. Jeff Lashley, I remember Jeff beating a boy over the Stafford that he wasn't supposed to beat, and I just almost hit the ceiling. I had to to hang up there for a while. It was so. I remember uh, these boys just just like it was a uh, was yesterday. A uh, boy that I remember wrestling was was so good in my mind was uh, uh, Scott Hubbard. Scott was not the very best of wrestlers, he was not the worst of wrestlers, but you couldn't pin him. You could not pin that boy. He, uh, he was like one of these little wire babies that you had, you know, you twist around and around, and no one could, could pin him. He was just this stubborn, you couldn't pin him. And I've got many, many memories like that, and I guess I just can't go on with that. And that's like, Think of another one I'd like to tell you. <laughs> but, uh, and I remember Gary Hall. Gary Hall was, uh, when he got in the down position, he was like a woolly booger. <laughs> he was just all tucked up, and there he was, and just like a ball of flesh. <laughs> and uh, no one could keep him down. He was sooner or later, he's going to turn around, little by little by little, and up he was. And then uh, he would <laughs> he'd always end up pinning. Uh, somebody. But I want to tell you about one boy. I've got to tell you, I talk, this will be the last one. One was Scotty Heath. Scotty was a little guy when we wrestled in uh, the uh, Burton Gym. We wrestled at Burton Gym and uh, he was about maybe the fifth grade then and uh, I was in the coaching and he came up and nuzzled up to me. Just a, just a little guy. He never was very tall. And uh, he would weigh 98 pounds soaking wet, you know. And I said, God asked him, you like that? Would you like to wrestle? He said, yes, sir, I would. Well, a couple years later, I saw him again. And he wrestled. And he, and he was a 98 pounder and went to the state, I think, four times. And you talk about what wrestling can do for a kid. That kid walked the hallways and nobody knew he was there. But after he finished wrestling, everybody knew who he was. Everybody knew who Scotty was. And it did so much for his self-esteem and one he had asthma real bad and uh, his mother told me this story his lungs collapsed on him and both of them and they, they almost lost him they, they rushed him to the hospital as quick as they could the doctor worked on him for several hours and he came out to Miss Heath he said Miss Heath he said I want to ask you one question now this is a great story I want to ask you one question this boy is either a swimmer Oh, he's a wrestler. Which is it? She said, he wrestled. He said, and that's what saved his life. He said, oh, he would not have made it. And he, he, was, he was a great kid. He just, uh, he, he had, uh, it took him from the heart of a lamb to a tiger. I mean, he, he was, he, he just, that's what wrestling does for you. Now, let me tell you the history. I'll I try to do this real quick. See, I could go on, on. I've got all kinds of stories like that. Rob Baker and all of them, and that's just on and on. So, uh, I raised $700 for the scatter match. Uh, the School for the Blind gave me an old, and I hate to say it, an old, kind of a worn out, dirty, dirty, dusty canvas. Uh, and we took the scatter match, put them under that old canvas. It had a rip in it. I sewed it up with uh, dental floss. And uh, I had one wrestler one night after we'd finished practice, had a mark all the way across his face, the stitches. <laughs> where one took him, took him across the mat with a cross face and uh, he had to print on his face for, for about several days. Uh, and so I thought, this is not going to work. We're going to have to do it. It was good. I appreciate it. And we would go into classrooms, clean the classrooms out of the chairs and everything and go in and lay the mats down, take the mat out, go back and put them back in. We did that to the cafeteria, went into the cafeteria. These mats weigh several hundred pounds. They picked these mats up after I got them, carry them in the cafeteria, carry them out of the cafeteria, gut the cafeteria, put the stuff back in. You never know they'd been there. And this is what I think of these boys. They just, they had no reason to take all that punishment. But uh, then I thought, we need some good wrestling mats. And I'm going to get them. And so I said, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. So I made a list of the parents. And boy, I started knocking on doors. 
and I, this is the truth, I raised for the first mat in two weeks, I raised two, I raised five thousand dollars. Those mats were expensive. We kept that for a while and I said, I want another one. The school didn't pay for these mats. The parents paid for them. And so I said, I need another mat. Better than even that. And I raised five thousand more dollars from the parents. And let me tell you a story about the parents. Uh, Reynolds. Y'all know Reynolds who was president of one of the banks, I think. Uh, he had a son that wrestled, Ernie. And so I thought, I'll go see uh, Mr. Reynolds. So I went uptown and uh, <coughs> went up to the teller. I said, my name's Bob Goff. Well, and uh, I said, I, I need to see Mr. Reynolds. He's president of the bank. She called and he said, send him in. I went in and I never will forget this. Never forget it. And I said, uh, Mr. Reynolds, I said, I'm raising money for a wrestling mat. Uh, could you give me mm, $20, $30? He said, how much do you like now, Bob? I said, well, right now I, got, I need $500. <laughs> he reached into his back pocket, pulled out he, five $100 bills. He went, one, two, three, four, five. And I looked at it, my eyes bugged out of it. I said, uh, wow, I said, uh, hmm. I said, do you need a receipt? And this is a compliment that I'll never forget. I like it. He said, do I need one? And I said, no, sir, you don't. And uh, that was the one time. And I had one wrestler who was expelled from school, and his father promised me $500. And his boy did something that wasn't very nice and they expelled him. And I thought, well, there goes $500. And I called him up, he says, I'm a man of my word. He said, you, I promised you $500, and the kid made a mistake, he said, you got it. Well, anyway, that, that's a little bit of the history of it. And uh, we, uh, I just hate to see a program like that uh, go down. I work the hallways. I could pick wrestlers out. Uh, we had some work done in the house uh, a few weeks ago and a telephone man came in. And I looked at him and I said, buddy, I said, were you a wrestler? He said, yes, sir, I was. He said, down in Texas. And I couldn't get him to stop talking. I thought, and he said, I was, I was a, a state champion down in 138 pounds. And he, I thought, and I thought, well, he, he couldn't get off of it. But I've done that so many times. I've said to people, do you ever think about wrestling? Do you ever think about wrestling, you know? Programs won't fail if you recruit and show the boys that you love and that you really want them to, to succeed. And uh, I love the program. Stayed with it. I uh, appreciate Gary Hall. Gary uh, was an exceptional wrestler. Very good. I know he won at least over 130 matches. I know that because I kept record of him. And uh, so I'm just proud of the program and uh, proud to be a part of it and uh, I just these boys will always be with me to the day I leave this earth and as uh, we say uh, I don't know of any any sport that teaches more self-esteem than wrestling uh, you have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody pretty much your size pretty much your height pretty much your weight and it doesn't matter if you're seven foot one a five foot one, uh, you have a place. And uh, the self esteem is the thing that I like about it so much. Never give up. Oh, and I'll have to mention one more. Uh, I'll have to mention uh, Michael Lillicrap. Uh, Michael always puzzled me. I, I couldn't <laughs> figure it out because every time he wrestled and came off the mat, there was blood on the mat. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. And, uh, but he was a tough guy, a tough guy. And uh, they don't come any, any better than Gary Hall, Tim, and uh, uh, Rob, Rob Baker. I, I can mention all of them, every one of them, every one of them. Well, I better stop talking then that's, uh, somebody might throw a shoe at me. Thank you and I appreciate it. Keep wrestling. <laughs>